It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A be- oh, wait. Uh, hi, guys. Riding with Marshall, and uh, today uh, it's my day off, and we're going to go riding. So uh, we might ride my wife's new bike here. Right there, the DN01. You saw me review it. Well, she loves it, so there it is, along with the Fury and the Ducati Scrambler, which actually might go away as much as I like keeping it around for an adventure bike. So let's start this day, shall we? Nice bright day out there, and crap. Yeah, we're not riding yet. Sorry. Hey guys, today I'm riding with Marshall. We are riding the Fury in the winter. Now here in Colorado, we do get storms, as the REO song, Riding the Storm Out, says. But generally, they melt pretty quickly. And we have some nice riding days every month of the year. It's the middle of March which still qualifies as winter, so I'm technically riding the Fury in winter. I actually ride my bikes year-round here. For those that live here in northern Colorado, I'm not saying anything new, but for those who don't, I'm telling you about our weather. Winter doesn't get bitchy until the end of January. She throws a few hissy fits as early as October, but that doesn't stop us from attempting stupid things here, like, say, climbing Long's Peak or camping in the mountains. In fact, you can see tents in some campgrounds nearly year-round. It's only in January and February when full PMS kicks in, which gives me PMS too. Parked Motorcycle Syndrome. The city doesn't plow my street, so it can be difficult to get the bike out of the neighborhood. Some of us chisel and shovel the street in front of the driveway to get a bike out, as I did last weekend. If you own a decent full-face helmet, some warm gloves and clothes, then I may see you out here riding. Because I'm usually not the only one riding on a nice day. However, if you are the you'll never catch me dead in a helmet type, then I guess we'll see you in April on a Sunday between the hours of noon and three. Unless a cloud comes in. Hopefully a freak hailstorm doesn't move in on you too. The sun here at 5,000 feet is a bit intense and melts away snow even in below freezing air temperature. If the air is dry enough, you can watch light snow cover nearly skip the water stage and go right from a solid to a vapor. We can be 20 degrees Fahrenheit in the morning and 70 by 3 p.m. Mother Nature is definitely bipolar. The reverse can happen in summer. So just because it is August, doesn't mean Mother Nature won't flare her temper and drop golf ball sized hail on you. This actually happened last August, and I still have to fix the roof. In the case of hail in Colorado, you really might wish you were wearing a helmet. Preferably carbon fiber, or at least fiberglass, for that contingency. Today I'm taking the ferry up to the dams along Horsetooth Reservoir. Watch the road for white coating. It's not frost, it's road salt. The Metzler tires on the Fury haven't slipped once though, and they are impressive. If you overinflate them even a little bit though, they bounce around the road like a basketball. So stick to what the manual says. The National Cycle windshield I have on it knocks back the cold to my chest, but my hands are fully exposed to the wind. If the air is colder than 50 degrees, I wear my heated gloves instead of just mere leather ones. This is Horsetooth Reservoir at the foothills to the mountains, outside of Fort Collins, Colorado. One of my favorite viewers, UK Busman, hey UK Busman, he also owns a Fury and told me he enjoys my mountain trips. Although I could tempt fate and go up a mountain canyon today, I'm willing to bet they are pretty sandy after last weekend's snowfall. 
Our county trucks will sand the steeper turns for traction for cars, which practically removes the traction for us two-wheeled hooligans. So do you see any salt on the road yet? If not, just keep watching. We've reached 61 degrees today, so our hardcore joggers and bicyclers are out, proving to themselves they haven't lost much muscle over the winter. I applaud them, because this is not a place I would want to go jogging. Well, I am exercising too, though. This clutch and brake lever won't move themselves. Now the Honda Fury may only have 57 horses to the rear wheel, but it also has 73 foot-pounds of force on the rear wheel to push it up these hills, which is enough. The Fury's turn radius can put it in its own way at times, but the challenge is part of the fun. I modified the exhaust a tiny bit in a method I'll expose at the 5,000 mile review. It's just the right volume now to hear it above the wind without being deafening. I still wish I could bring the bars in an inch and about two inches closer. My shoulders still get sore after two hours of riding her. Although the Fury has ABS brakes, I've never felt it kick in once. Then again, I ride it conservatively, so there hasn't been a reason to lay into the brakes yet. I hope you like this route, because next weekend we will be taking two other bikes up it for comparison. I chose this route today because there are really no shady spots for ice to lurk in. Sunshine obliterates snow, but where it can't reach, ice will cling with little regard to air temperature. There are plenty of shady spots in the canyons that never see sunlight this time of year, so I'll save the high country trips for another month. How about some personal stuff? Get to know me a little better? Well, let's see. For one, I had a head cold in February that tested positive for the dreaded virus. For me, it was just a head cold, and I was over it before the test results even came back. No harm done. Make of that what you will. For another, did you see the Argo, my Goldwing, in the garage at the beginning? No? Well, I traded it in. I was out of garage space for my wife's new bike, and her scrambler wasn't part of the trade-in deal, so the wing got traded in. I miss her like a lover, but frankly, I enjoyed riding her the least. Why? She was heavy, bulky, cumbersome, and hard to navigate in tight parking lot maneuvers, like turning around an elephant in a jewelry store. It could be done with practice and forethought, but no other bike I've ridden causes that much apprehension for me. To get good at the wing in parking lots, I would literally have to find a school parking lot and take it in tighter and tighter circles until I was well versed in it. And I'd have to do this every season. No other bike, like I said, causes me that kind of apprehension or needed that much practice. Most motorcycles can turn through a gas station parking lot from one pump to the other with no nervousness whatsoever. However, that is the Goldwing's only flaw they are a near-perfect machine. I can hear your arguments out there right now, but I'm telling you, once you've owned one, there is nothing more comfortable on the highway. If I get another, it will be a lighter, newer Goldwing, and probably the DCT version, because I'm lazy. But in the meantime, I'm on the hunt for an adventure bike. Will I get a GS? A T700? A Walmart Huffy. Please subscribe to this channel, and if you want to be notified of my videos, you gotta click on the little bell too. Do that, and you'll find out which one. I was in a shopping research frenzy, watching every video out there on the middle and heavyweight adventure bikes. The next video will show what I choose, and why. Also, I've started doing video work for a chain of dealerships in the area. 
John Elway Power Sports has bought up a few of the dealers, and I stand behind what they are doing because fees have dropped, and some fees, like the socialistic fee of charging everyone a refurbished fee on used bikes, has been dropped altogether to my knowledge. You'll be hearing and maybe even seeing me on the John Elway Power Sports YouTube channel. This extra work may take up some time from this channel, but I'll try to keep it going because this is my channel to do whatever I want with. I still haven't taken you to our ghost towns yet, and I may be featuring some photography pointers too. I like to ride places and take photos, so I may be featuring those photos and the cameras I use, if that kind of thing interests you. Bike reviews get me the most views because they are searchable, but eventually I hope enough of you will watch my channel just for the rides. And I hope to meet some of you. That'd be nice. I hope to find someone to always ride with me on these videos to act as a camera person also. That would give my videos more diversity. Let's see what happens this year together, shall we? In the meantime, let's keep our chins up, both in the curves of the road and in the curves of life. <laughs> Hey guys, today on Riding with Marshall, uh, you're going to be watching me mess up. 